and we are live what's happening everyone welcome back to the punch perfect boxing channel before we get going today please make sure to like the video comment your prediction for this fight down below and if you are new please make sure to subscribe to the channel today i'm going to be doing my punch perfect preview and prediction for a middleweight unification this saturday between the wbo champion yanabek elimhunali taking on the ibf champion vincenzo gulteri now, if you told me that this weekend there was a unification fight between two unbeaten world champions, you think I would be incredibly excited. But ultimately, I'm not particularly looking forward to this fight. I think it's going to be incredibly one-sided. And I think it just demonstrates and kind of signifies what a dead graveyard division the middleweight division is. And that's so sad because historically... There aren't many deeper divisions than middleweight. You just go through the champions that there have been every single weight class and middleweight jumps off the page at you. There's been so many great fighters, so many great champions. And in recent years, we've seen one of those in Gennady Golovkin. And with his reign of terror coming to an end and as him kind of phasing out of the sport, you think that opens up so many opportunities for other guys to come through and stake their claim as the best in the world. And we should see unifications and we should see undisputed fights between some of the best fighters on the planet, but the best fighters in the division vision but really and truly at middleweight there's just a talent shortage and the fights between the champions aren't particularly exciting there's a couple of names we look out for that are exciting but really and truly it's a graveyard of a division it has been for quite a while now and this fight should have a lot of hype around it when you just read that there's two unbeaten champions unifying in the middleweight division that should fill you with joy and excitement but it just doesn't and that kind of signifies where the division's at and that signifies who the champions are in this fight. Now, I'll start by talking about Yanabek Hanim Hanali because I'd said some pretty harsh things just then. I don't really want to include him in that because I think he's actually a really good fighter. I know people look at the Denzel Bentley performance and kind of go, eh, if you're not uh, destroying Denzel Bentley who's never really gone past British level, then what are you? But I think we've seen a lot of great fighters on their way up and at the start of their reigns not have great performances and potentially see a challenger produce the best effort of their career as well, which results in a closer fight. I appreciate Yanibek's uh, reign to date has been pretty uninspiring and he's kind of carried on the legacy of his previous holder of the WBO belt, uh, Demetrius Andrade, who had one of the most lackluster championship reigns in the middleweight division and in the division's history. But I don't think a lot of it is Yanibek's fault. There's been mandatories and people in the rankings that he could have fought for the belt or could have defended against, and they've all ran a million miles. And some of them are good fights. You know, Jaime Munguia, for example, would be a legit test for Yanibek Halim Hinali and a really good fight at middleweight. He wanted no part of that. You know, him moving up to the division as a WBO champion meant that he was going to be mandatory for that belt, and he didn't want to fight Halim Hinali when the opportunity came up. I mean, he's not even got a world title at this stage. Munguia, so that shows that he wasn't keen on that fight you know Chris Eubank Liam Smith there's a couple of names from the UK that have been linked with that fight also you know Demetrius Andrade dropped the belt rather than fight Alim Hanali to move up to 168 so I don't think it's necessarily his fault it's people not wanting to fight him and the division having a, a talent shortage has meant that he just hasn't had the fights to really stake his claim as one of the best in the world but I think purely on talent and ability I think he's the best at 160 and I think he's actually a really good fighter that could go on to have a great career but just the opportunities aren't there for, for him at 160. I know people are probably be frustrated with him talking a lot on Twitter or asking someone to tweet for him some angry stuff on Twitter as well but the fights just aren't really there for him, makeable fights anyway and this is the best they can really do and it's your unification and you're still not particularly excited. You just go through the resume and there's some fringe world level guys that have done some stuff at world level like Rob Brandt um, and also Hassan and Dan, but not a good version of Hassan and Dan at this stage. Not fighters that you think really prove that you're necessarily an elite talent, which Yannibek regards himself as. Then a couple of guys from Britain in Danny Dignam who belonged absolutely nowhere near Yannibek and Nim Hanali and I think the result speaks for itself. Denzel Bentley, which was a fight that I think people now use as a stick to beat Yanibek with because Denzel Bentley is a very good fighter domestically here in the UK, but stepped up to European level against Felix Cash and came up very short, was was dominated inside a couple of rounds and people say he lost a shootout, he was just picked apart and beaten up by Felix Cash and outgunned in that fight. But Denzel Bentley gave his best effort, he was very much overlooked heading into that matchup. Yanabek just didn't give the best version of himself. 
We'd seen Gennady Golovkin, a Kazakh middleweight. You know, people always think about his reign of terror and him just running through everyone. There were performances on the way up for Golovkin where people then questioned if he was any good and the real deal afterwards as well. Yanibek's got a lot of talent. What he did in the amateurs, he was a spectacular amateur. I go back to the uh, 2013 World Championship, uh, Championships in Kazakhstan where um, Anthony Fowler withdrew from their bout and it got given as a walkover to Yanibek and he ended up beating Jason Quigley in the final at the Olympics. He beat um, Anthony Fowler as well. A lot of people didn't like Anthony Fowler around that time, so celebrated that victory for Yanibek. He's a very, very good fighter, you know, schooled in the, uh, the Kazakh amateur school, so he's got a very good style. He punches hard and I think he can be the best in the division. I think he is the best in the division, but sometimes that doesn't mean a great deal when the talent's not there. But I don't want to bash him too much because I don't think a lot of it is his fault they're just not the right dance partners for him so far and the division is just it's, it's dreadful I don't want to swear but it's it's a terrible division moving over to his opponent now Vincenzo uh, Gulteri now I'm sure people are sort of wondering what he can bring to the table you know he's an unbeaten world champion you know recent world champion won the world title earlier this year the IBF belt that became vacant because Golovkin vacated it he ended, ended up taking on uh, the 2012, London 2012 silver medalist at middleweight, Esquiva Falcao, the Brazilian who's been around for a long time and has just waited for the perfect opportunity to win a world title and not actually have to face anyone decent. Finally gets an easy world title shot against Vincenzo Gulteri and then loses. Now Gulteri just hasn't fought outside of Germany, which is just a big red flag whenever you're looking at a German fighter because... There's bad decisions over there, and if they're not fighting outside of there, it's probably for a reason, probably because they're not good enough, or they just don't feel comfortable boxing outside of their country as well. So that's a bit of a concern and a red flag when you look at the resume. He's also 30 years old and just doesn't have a significant victory. He's over 20 fights deep into his pro career, and there's not a significant win outside of him winning the world title. And also seven knockouts in 21 wins suggests he's not a particularly big puncher either so he doesn't really have that get out of jail card or that element to his game where you're thinking could he hurt Yanabak could he get rid of him that's not even on the table this weekend either so I've gone through the film and watched him and I've seen little bits of him in the past anyway kind of in and around the European level there's a draw on the resume um, when he was boxing for the domestic German title as well so that's another red flag that kind of crops up where you're going if you if you're struggling at that level are you really truly world level and have you just got fortunate matchmaking Skiva Falcao that fight was a very dirty and messy fight in my opinion there were low blows from both of them they both kind of brought the head down in when they were close up so they couldn't land clean shots on each other and it resulted in some dirty fighting the heads coming in both of them having to throw low blows because the elbows were tucked in and the body wasn't available it was a very messy fight and I think Gulteri kind of won it just by being on the back foot and looking a little bit more elusive. Uh, he was switching stances. So that's one part of his game. We saw him kind of operating out of Southpaw in some instances, him then switching to uh, Orthodox in other instances. And Falcao is actually a Southpaw himself with good amateur pedigree. So that kind of prepares him for Yanabek in one aspect, that he's got a good school in and he's Southpaw. That's kind of where the comparisons end. And Falcao had gone very stale waiting for his opportunity you know, he could have jumped at the opportunity to have mandatory shots in the past or just kind of amped up his pursuit of a world title in the past. And he never did it because he wanted an easy fight for a world title and was just banking on that happening. And Golovkin moving on one day, that happened and he still wasn't good enough to beat Gulteri. So I think ultimately Vincenzo Gulteri isn't a bad fighter. He's in and around European level, but in a middleweight division where he doesn't really look world level and doesn't have any good wins to his name. That's a big red flag. And there are in a division that I'm not high on at all, there are a number of fighters I would pick to beat him. Some from the UK, some on the world scene, even someone like a Sergei Derevchenko. I know he moved up to fight Jaime Munguia at 168, but you think of how much trouble he gave Munguia and gives everyone trouble. If he moved back down and got the fight against uh, Gulteri, I'd pick him to win quite comfortably. So I don't rate Vincenzo Gulteri, and it's ultimately why I'm not looking forward to this unification fight. He's not a bad fighter by any means, and he does have some parts to his game that could make it tricky for a couple of rounds against Yanabek. But the way he ran through Danny Dignan, the way he ran through uh, also Stephen Butler recently, I don't see it being more like the Denzel Bentley fight. I see it being more like those fights. I think it'll be somewhere in between because I think he's better than those names I mentioned. I don't think he's quite a good at Denzel Bentley, potentially, who's on a really good run at the minute and looks devastating at middleweight. 
but I think Janibet's going to win this fight and win it quite comfortably. I think Gulteri's going to go on the run. He's going to switch stances. He's going to look to make it really difficult, come in low, make it difficult for Janibet to land clean punches. He's going to fight a little bit dirty, throwing low blows, bringing the head as close as he can, sort of down to his waist with the elbows tucked in to make it difficult for clean shots to land. But Janibet's just that's just going to make him angry, make him frustrated. He's going to hit you to the body and eventually get you out of there because there's just such a big golfing class here. So I think Yannibet's going to win by knockout between rounds four and eight. Let me know your thoughts down below, guys, as we see a new unified middleweight champion crown. Thank you for tuning in. There's a big fight this weekend over in Australia between uh, Brian Mendoza and Tim Zhu for the WBO 154-pound title. Maybe one of those ends up at 160 one day as well. So go check out my preview and prediction for that fight. Thank you for tuning in. I'll catch you next time.